Sebastian Croft, my kids say thank you very much for Heartstoppers. I say thank you very much. And I know the whole community say thank you very much. Oh, my word. Had you any idea when you were making it that Heartstoppers <laughs> was going to be a worldwide hit? I, like, no. And even hearing you say that is mental. It's insane. I think I think I had an idea of it meaning a lot to some people because it meant a lot to me, just the books. But no, this is crazy what is happening. It's um, it's kind of what you always hope for a project, but just I never expected this kind of reaction. So it's insane. It is a bit. And I love the way, so we've spoken before, and I love the way you're excited about it without being that sort of fake flappy hand showbiz excited yeah you know people are going oh it is you're just okay this is fantastic it's like you're embracing what's happening for all the right reasons i think genuinely sometimes promoting something that you don't love is really difficult and this oh what did you do that you don't love <laughs> oh yes! no yes straight in <laughs> um no, no but no but even things that you kind of do like on a surface level like even most projects are are you're very lucky if it's something that you love and and you like the people who are making it and you're proud of what you did but it's very rare that you get this extra level which i feel with this project with heartstopper specifically that it feels like it really deeply means a lot to a lot yeah, of people absolutely. and so talking about that has been very important not only for other people but also for myself because I had such a strong connection to the book when I first read it and the people who made it and for so many reasons and it's a shame that it is but it feels very new that so many queer people have been involved in telling a queer story um and it's just also these people have become some of my best friends the like my life is with the project or not like with Heartstopper or not it's these people have become really close and really a big part of my life I'm gonna say English so people know what I'm actually <laughs> saying they've become some of my best friends so now it's like all of the people who are, I'm closest to are doing well at the same time which is such a beautiful thing um it's so rare that that you get to go on this experience as a group of people as well um yeah that's okay. Let's go back to the beginning then. Yes. Not of you. Let's go. Let's just do heart heart stops, and then we're going to go back and do uh, talk about other things. But so Alice uh, does these graphic novels. Yes. They're massive. She's she's big on social media. The show. Then people. There's whispers about the show. How soon did you hear that you were up for it or auditioning? I'm gonna tell. Talk me through all of that. Yeah. So I got sent an audition. Um, for this project called Heartstopper and my agent said they're the most beautiful books like go go read them and often when a when a script is based on a book it's kind of you'll go and read it or find out about it but I am really really dyslexic reading is so scary for me I have like a lot of uh, fear from school of being you know embarrassed or feeling like I'm stupid because of struggling with reading so I can't just pick up a book and read it in a day. Um, so I went to get the book with the intention of reading a few pages, getting a gist of what it was about. And I just found myself finishing the book in, in a day, like in the afternoon. And that afternoon going back and getting the second and third book. This is a graphic novel. A graphic novel, say, yeah. yeah. Sorry. And um, it was such a joyous, but also important, but also kind of, liberating book and it felt so celebratory 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 um it's just it was amazing i'm finishing it in that in that first day and then going and finding the second and third and i had this horrible feeling in my stomach of like i don't know what i'm gonna do if i don't get this one wow okay that's a big that no that's like big for an actor. And, and and it's not just to say that like i i sent my agent a voice note basically saying that like I've never done that with a project before just saying I, like, I, I just I have I have to be a part of this in some way it's it felt so important it felt so rare it felt so just you could feel you could feel this thing existing just outside of the story this like this magic of whatever the heart stopper magic is and um 
I just felt like I had to be a part of it. And so um, sent off my uh, audition and then I was out in Atlanta um, filming another uh, show and I'd been doing like a week of night shoots and they, my agent called me and was like, oh, you've got a Zoom with Alice and um, Eros, the director, and uh, Daniel Edwards, the casting director. Um, and I'd come back and I think I got in at about eight in the morning and then my Zoom was like at 11. So I had like an hour's sleep. Oh, It'd been like a long week, like a long slog of, of filming. Yeah, but you're only 20. It's fine. You don't need sleep. It didn't feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the audition was just... I still is a bit of a blur in terms of like I was running on about two hours of sleep um, and I, I I left the audition and I just like I have no idea how that went I was also that this thing of like being in an audition room with someone who like Alice was there and I was like oh my god it's Alice but you can't say that because I was like I've got to be a professional I've got to do work um, and then a few days later found out that uh, I got the part of Ben which was amazing very exciting um just i you know when you're you've you've wanted something so badly that hearing it it took like quite a few days to kind of yeah. i just kept remembering like oh my god this is going to happen like that's really cool so were you more excited about that than you were when you heard you got game of thrones and you were sitting in school <laughs> <laughs> yeah the genuinely nice thing and i feel very fortunate about this is that everything i've done has felt like a step in the right direction if that makes sense like game of thrones was i think the first film or tv thing i ever got and so and it's game of thrones like yeah. so th uh, like at the time that was the biggest possible thing that could have happened in my universe of life if that makes sense yeah, yeah it does. um and i feel like the same about heart stopper for that point in my life i also feel like um especially with Heartstopper, but with kind of every project that I think if Heartstopper, if I'd auditioned for Heartstopper even a year before, um, I probably wouldn't have felt kind of the same ready. confidence, ready yeah. to do it. And I feel the same about quite a lot of projects. I feel like I'm usually about at the earliest I possibly could be to do that thing. And then you kind of grow on the, and learn on the job. So we'll, we'll carry on with Heartstopper if we may. So... Uh, it's very important to the queer community, this show. And it's interesting. You and I talked already about the very lovely Russell T. Davis, yes. who um, who I've known a long time and I completely adore. And he posted about your show. Um, and I know you met him as well. Yeah. Uh, and for somebody like him to be so supportive and your show is about love. And what's so lovely is um in in the community very often there's a lot of shows about it so yeah. I, I i think it's a sin was one of the best things ever to have been on television wow. um and obviously they were talking about aids pose i was obsessed with i mean i yeah. literally dev ever, just <laughs> devoured it um but there was a lot of heartbreak yes. um uh, and and it was a tough 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 watch yeah. um this Heartstopper is about love. Yeah. It is about uh, the community, but it is about love. Yeah. Uh, that underlies everything about it. Yeah. And it's simple. And I mean that in the, I hope in at the Alice, when she listens to this. Hello, Alice. Hey, um, Alice. <laughs> um, but, but, I, but to all of you, I mean simple in, in a very loving way. I yeah. hope you understand. Yeah, completely. For me, that's why this works. Uh, that simplicity is why I think it also connects with people who aren't queer or like my dad loved the show and cried his eyes he out. He must be the proudest dad. Oh, yeah. He also was like, you're a little shit. Like, <laughs> stop being mean to Charlie. I was like, dad, it's not me. Um, that shows what good actor you are. <laughs> yeah. um, no, my parents didn't like me being, being mean on screen. Um, but I think that simplicity is why everyone can connect with it because... Like you said at the end of the day, it's just about two young people falling in love. Um, and the Russell T Davies thing is, I don't think he fully will understand the impact that he's had on a lot of young people and their ability to feel confident 
telling stories, but also just to be able to tell stories. Um, I don't think Heartstopper would exist without him because I don't wow. think... Wow. Well, because, wow. because I think that it wouldn't necessarily have... There would like people wouldn't have the confidence in queer shows doing well because he's paved the way. Even when we were making Heartstopper um, and It's a Sin was coming out, there was this feeling of like, oh, queer shows can do really well. And it, It's a Sin just took the world by storm. And seeing that, I think it's, yeah, he's just, he's done so much and he's so lovely. Like, Isn't he? I, I'm, I've only met him once and it was, um, last weekend um and he just he genuinely cares about everyone and uh i was with joe who plays charlie um and uh we both were with him and he just was gave us so much time and so much advice and was so lovely and i think it's people like him that really not only open the doors but then jam it open so that yes, other people can absolutely. come through uh so, two things to say about that. Joe's grandfather contacted me. No. Joe's grandfather to tell me how lovely you were. Oh. <laughs> Said you're not like your character. Okay, good. There we go. Thank so you. that, <laughs> which I thought was very sweet. So, when you speak to Joe, do tell him. Uh, and I must message him back. But also, what? so we spoke um, a week ago. Yes. And so, I, when I was doing uh, my research on you the day before, and social media is very important these days. You know about casting. They look at uh, how many people yeah. follow you, all of this stuff. Obviously, you've got to be a great actor as well. But there you were with 100,000 followers, and now you've got half a million followers. And the, the impact that you're making uh, on young people is enormous. Do you feel like you're carrying something that you weren't expecting to carry now on your shoulders? Uh, that's a wait. That's a very heavy question. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's an interesting, interesting one, and the pause is mainly because this last week I feel like I haven't fully at all processed what is mm. going on. Um, the fact that so many people have watched the show and then engaged with us on things like social media is insane. Um, I think, I think just being part of this show, I was aware that there would be a responsibility with just feeling i feel like the especially people who have read the graphic novels it feels like these characters have jumped out of the book and onto the screen and then onto instagram and they're real living people um, oh that's really interesting but, that's very interesting and i just yeah i just i think that comes with a certain amount of responsibility there was a certain amount of fear that people loved these characters and would they feel the same about the show because often book adaptions people feel like weren't representative of how they perceived it when they read it um so there's that element of it but also like you said i guess carrying a weight of feeling like whenever you're telling a story that hasn't necessarily been told or is of people who don't usually get a story front and center you feel this responsibility to represent more than just yourself and and kind of speak for a wider community um and i i think there's an element of that but also there now is a big community out there i mean we were at, um so uh, we met russell at the um craft baftas and there was a party before that which was the kind of pre-bafta party um and i ended up standing and chatting to um shooty from sex education amari from it to sin and callum from it to sin and isn't he lovely, Colin? Oh, or Callum. Yes, yeah, oh, oh, oh. they're like all of the loveliest Love people. Him. But there was this moment where we, I was stood in this circle, and we were actually talking about this sense of feeling like a responsibility, or, um, and I just, I just feel like it could feel like um, Heartstopper is, or the cast of Heartstopper have this kind of, I guess, uh, bigger responsibility, and I think that. It, it does come with that, but I guess overwhelmingly it feels like there's so many people out there who are also representing that same community and who are wanting to tell these stories and so many fresh, young, excited people who have yet to come, which I think I just feel like part of this big, wonderful family rather than this sense of, oh God, I've got to represent yeah, everyone. Yeah. Uh, there's, so there's a young uh, young man I work with. Um, he's 24, 
And what he said to me about your show was that he wished he'd seen a show like this mm. for him yeah. when he was 15 and 16, where he was, um, he, he, I'll put it politely, he said he wasn't particularly nice to people because he didn't understand what was happening. And he, there was nothing like that yeah. on television. I think the response is also comes with a slight melancholy for a lot of people, which is not only did most people not have that experience who are older, but it's not it's not a fair representation. Like I think really it whilst it has honesty to it, it's probably the most positive representation of what it is to be at school and to be a queer person that's out there. So I think there's this weird mix of incredibly hopeful, incredibly uplifting, but also um there was actually someone wrote an article about talking about this sense of it's beautiful, but I just I wish I'd had this and feeling kind of sad that yes, that I they that. didn't. Yeah. Um, and I think that I mean I was I was really badly bullied at school. Um, and if you're ever different in any way, yeah. Um, and look, I, I wonder what they'd say now. <laughs> I um I had a beautiful moment, which was <laughs> oh, God. someone yeah. someone who was part of a group chat. Um, which basically was about me and saying like, oh, he, his clothes are so gay. He's so this, he's so that. Oh, lovely. Um, lovely stuff. Yeah. Messaged me saying, oh, hey, mate, it's been so long. Like, you know, <gasps> we should go for a drink. And I was like, oh, <gasps> glorious. And you did say no. I just didn't reply. Good for Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Um, yeah. But like the sad thing is that a lot of people experienced, have experienced, continue to experience bullying, especially for being different and especially for being queer. Um, and it's it's really shit. And whilst Heartstopper is like a safe haven and a space that hopefully people feel a warmth and a happiness and a pride for who they are, it also, I think for a lot of people, comes with a sense of like, I wish I had this when I was mm. younger. Why stick with one workout when with Peloton you can do so much more? Like pushing yourself on a hit run or unwinding with a yoga flow. Meditation, boxing, membership required. At Asda, we've dropped Asda. We're on your side and... Summer holiday yet? Well, if the answer is no, then listen very carefully because this podcast is brought to you by Intrepid Travel, the leader in responsible, ethical, small group adventures since 1989. Now, Intrepid are encouraging you to deep dive into Europe. Yes, please. They have expert local leaders who can show you some of Europe's hard to find gems. Now, whether that's sharing a meal with locals on Croatia's little known Kornati Islands, or doesn't the sound blissful, my youngest daughter is desperate to go to Croatia. Or this is one for the bucket list, I'm sure, an eco-friendly whale-watching expedition in Iceland. That's me signing up now. Intrepid are all about going beyond the surface. I'm already dreaming about another trip with them. They're offering hiking across the black volcanic earth on the island of Pico on the Azores. Can you imagine how wonderful that would be? please do visit intrepidtravel.com to find out more. And I cannot wait to hear all about your adventures. Absolutely. I think diversity on screen is so important. And we talk about diversity a lot. And there needs to be people of all colours. Yeah. There needs to be people of all sexualities. There needs to be people of all ages. And I think... And, I, I, and everybody needs that to look at. Yeah. I, you know, I've, I've interviewed so many people who've said that, you know, Rob Beckett who says that when he was growing up, there was nobody like him on television. Yeah. So he thought it could never happen. Well, I, I have always, like 100%, and I, I completely agree, but I don't think I understood the value of good representation yeah. until yeah, yeah. Heartstopper. Yeah. Because we've had, someone tweeted um, that they used one of the scenes in the later um, episodes uh, where Nick comes out to his mum. Um they kind of watch that with their family and then kind of use that to open up the conversation about coming out to their parents. And I think just, I didn't realize how little representation and how little, like the first time I saw two people, two guys get married, I think was on Modern Family, which as in itself is kind of like a fun family show, mm. not really talking about. But it's a lovely the deeper, show. Oh, I yeah, love yeah. Modern I mean, family. we love it. Um, <laughs> 
but I think, and I must have been 12 or, and, and I don't know, it's just, I it hadn't even, I hadn't even realized how little um, queer content I'd been exposed to until recently. And I think that representation is something that is spoken about so much, but genuinely makes a huge difference to people's lives when they feel like they're seen. Of course. And I think that... But I think it's across the board. Yeah. And I think it's really, really important. And, and for all young people that to know that if they think, you know, if they're the person that's being bullied about the way they dress yeah. or because they can't read or because I was always uh, teased because I loved musical theatre. Yeah. I wanted to be a TV presenter. And everyone's like, oh, you. And you just think, no, that everybody needs somebody that they can look up to, that they can see. Not that they worship, it's just, oh, if they did it, then I can yeah. do it. You know, and I think that's really important. Where did this drive for being an actor come from? Because you were very young when you first were on stage. I mean, you did Oliver, was Oliver your very first thing? Uh, I did, I did Chitty, my first professional was Chitty. thing. Chitty, Chitty, Bang, Bang. It was on tour. It came to my local theatre, which was in Oxfordshire. And I played, well, I was cast. They had like a group of local kids. And then within that, they had... um a few people who had speaking lines and I got I got I got the part of the toy maker's son who has the pivotal line in Chitty Chitty Bang go Bang. On, go on. Have you got any oh, I've I've fluffed it. No Is it I can't you remember whether it's have you got no, any don't toys try. No, or have you got any more no, toys? No, I'm sorry. No, you lost I lost that. it. That you spark that thing I had when I was seven is gone. Lost the part. Um <laughs> but it was like it was such a cool thing to have a line it meant i got a microphone of course. i loved it and oh. i spent the whole time pestering the director being like can i do more and really um, at yeah. seven well so it's something i've kind of uh, spoken about a lot which is kind of i guess how do you get into acting or like where does it come from and it was never a conscious thing it was never like oh i want to be a movie star or i want to be famous it was I used to put on plays in my living room. I used to do magic tricks. I used to play the piano. Like, if you came over to my house when I was seven, six, eight, nine, nineteen, twenty, you know, um, I'd pull you into the living room, throw on some costumes, and I'd start an improvised show that would end when you were built up the courage to say, I've got to go now. I would just, like, go on and on. And, um, and I just loved entertaining people, making people laugh. And so when I got the opportunity to do that on a stage and I realized that you could make a career out of this and that this was a, a thing and also wasn't just me being the annoying little brother, but was actually something that my friends could come and see and think, oh, that's so cool. You're on stage. Um, it started to feel like this tangible art form that I was discovering, not realizing that that's what it was. Um, and so I've just been chasing that feeling I get ever it. since yeah. I get it from the age of three that's all I wanted to do so yeah. I absolutely get it and I I love that you say you weren't thinking about fame because it wasn't about fame I get the feeling for you that that's a byproduct that's well, not what you're aiming for I also feel lucky that I started in the theatre and especially by the time I got to perform on the West End which was kind of always had been my dream and aspiration mm. um, and it was such an amazing feeling but also you see these music like these musical theater stars or these people who have just done two hours of the most incredible singing the most incredible acting the most incredible dancing absolutely killed themselves and then you go out the stage door maybe there's a few people to sign a program of and then you get on your bike or you get on the tube and you go back home and there's this it's just it's not at all as glamorous in the theatre as as people often think it is like mm. i remember seeing like mice and rats backstage and like it's just and you it's hard, hard it's hard work, work. Eight like shows people a have week. to sweat and yeah. tears yeah. and blood um and so i think growing up and seeing how much people sacrifice and how hard it is to even get a job and then once you've got a job it's still that's not all it doesn't become all easy um so i think starting in the theatre gave me a huge respect and appreciation for the work and what really matters yeah. rather than like yeah. Instagram and yeah. parties and clothes, like all this stuff that's great. And if you do it right, that stuff can become something that amplifies your work, I think. And fun. Make sure it's always fun. Yeah, exactly. It's not the be all and end. But all it's not everything. it's not the the end game. Uh, so obviously we have to talk about your parents because um, 
you know, it, it is, there you were at seven years old it, it, doing shows and now then you're Game of Thrones. You, I mean, many things and you, you, you know, it's your, your star is rising, rising, rising. Do your parents, when you come back from a day, do they just say, hello, dear, sit down, let's have supper. Um, and, and it's just, that happens to be your job or were they, did they help you? Did they push you? Did they keep you back? You know, how, what's that like? I think that for a lot of kids who start in theatre, there's usually this kind of an, another force who's in some ways encourage them or push them towards that, um, which is fine but and, and great, um, but not at all the case with my parents. Um, they... Not that, and this isn't to say that they weren't at all, in, you know, encouraging. They have gone above and beyond in supporting me. But this was never their dream or their world. They both have normal jobs that do fun, normal things. Um, and I just kind of, I think I really pestered them to go to auditions and stuff like this. But my God, I like, I feel so grateful for everything that they've done. Aww. Like my dad still does self tapes with me which is when you're auditioning for something and basically the first round is usually you filming yourself at your home but like the amount of hours that my parents and my brother and sister have spent in the car driving me to auditions because we lived in um in oxfordshire when i was younger um and so it was like 45 minutes an hour each way to get into london so if i wanted to go for an audition that was like a day for mm. one of the members of our family that was like a day from the weekend and then when you get in a show my parents would go up to London, do a day's work, wait, and then at 11 when I finished a show, drive me back and then get me up at 7 for, for for the school. Like... You all must have been exhausted. But, like, my point <laughs> is only that it's not this kind of foreign world that's just existed and that they're like, oh, sweetie, that's lovely, like, mm -hmm. let's have dinner. They are as much a part of it as I am. And I think that's the thing about going into the arts. It's like, it's never just you, it's kind of a, a commitment from your community to support you through it because like even six months ago I was I had a project that I'd I'd been cast in and then it got like pulled from under my feet feeling mm. like that and um it was like it just it really like hurt and was really hard and I was just crying my eyes out and my parents and my agent like that community of people were there to scoop me up and and Lovely. Help me get back on the horse, as How it were. Lovely. Um, That's so, so no, important. Whether they like it or not, they're they're very much part <laughs> of it. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about um, Oscars uh, because of Amelia and because of Olivia. I mean, please. I know. mean, please. So, uh, horrible histories. Yes. Uh, I met you very briefly at horrible histories at the the big showbiz um, uh, opening, and it was that was such fun. And you were in that. In fact, my daughter was watching it the other day. Uh, again, um, <laughs> that's lovely. It's a lovely film. And you were in it with Amelia, who yes. is uh, in Coda and is yes. outstanding. Ridiculously good. Oh, my God. Are you still in touch with her? Yes, still in touch with her. It's just, I'm like, it's it's so lovely when good people do good things. I'm and so pleased that you say she's good because I, I get the she just, Coda. She's her good. and her whole family, they are the sweetest people. Um, and like it also is insane because we used to like play in her garden and would talk about you know like Timothy Chalamet, Saoirse Ronan, these these kind of young idols that we had of oh my god did you see the Oscars or oh my god did you watch the Baftas, <laughs> and for like three years later for her to be in those rooms being nominated for a Bafta and so thoroughly deserved, she's incredible. Yeah, and, she really is. And also I feel like she, I, she won't know this, but for the community of people around her who have grown up in the same position as her, going for auditions and kind of wanting to succeed, to see someone who felt so close to us, like being at the Oscars, there's, I feel like this sense of, oh my God, like you can, do, like it can <laughs> happen, you know? Cause it feels so alien, those big award shows with these big famous people and to like the camera zoom in, zoom in and to see Amelia and her mom Claire there, I was like, ah! Have you spoken to her since the Oscars? I have, and she sent me a lovely message about Heartstopper, just saying oh, lovely. how great it is. And um, she, yeah, she's just lovely. So now Olivia, because I love this story. Um, of, you didn't know that Olivia was going to be in Heartstopper. No. So they had this like 
Olivia Coleman. Olivia yeah. Coleman. Just in case anyone yeah. didn't know, the <laughs> Olivia. It's like Madonna. It's just one word. Yeah, well, Olivia. One name. Um, they have a call sheet which is kind of numbers of, you know, like just the cast, like just basically a list of the cast. And there was just this like mystery number three, and everyone was like, "Who's number three? They're playing next mum. We don't know." Um, and there were all these like rumors going around set of who it might be. And as a joke, we uh, we put one of the crew members' photo on number three, like the number three sheet. And so I sent a message to our like we've got a Heartstopper group chat. I was like, "Guys, I know who number three is." And I was about to send this like photo of one of the crew members and um i got this message from uh, kit being like patrick's just told us who it is like don't tell anyone else like we can't like people can't find out and i was like oh i was joking <laughs> and patrick the producer was stood next to kit and joe and they were like oh my god bash knows who number three is and patrick was like okay i'm gonna tell you but like we have to keep this under wraps and so like it was kind of an accident how we ended up finding out originally because until she was actually on set i think they were like didn't want to say anything wow um but yeah. And, and how lovely is she as well? So lovely. <laughs> like, just, I, I don't know how she has the energy for everyone because it doesn't matter who you are. She doesn't just say hi. She will she will listen deeply and she's, she's incredible. She's like, truly, it, when you're in a room with her, you're just, I'm aware that I'm watching something it, like miraculous. I think she's, um, uh, I think she'd be embarrassed for me saying this, uh, but I would say that she's, Judy Dench she's yeah she's she? <laughs> iconic yeah. and and also I think that she won an Oscar a few, like and and yet she would come and do a small part on our show because she loved the director but also because she loved the story yeah and yeah. I think as an actress now who has so much power and can choose where they put their time and, and energy and and give something a voice um for her to like really go out of her way to be a part of the show and to support it. It's just, it's incredible and she's incredible. So now you've met Russell T Davies and he's back on Doctor Who. Are you going to be the new Doctor Who? Let's start that rumour. Let's start, Let's that. start that. Can we start Maybe that rumour? James rumor? Bond. Yeah. I, should we do both? Doc yeah. But, okay. Yeah, at the same time. All right. Doctor Who and Bond. All right, you have to choose. Okay. Right, here, in my right hand, yeah. Doctor Who. My Easy left, left hand, James Bond. Straight away. You're going James Bond? You're 100%. You, well, what happens if Russell says he wants you to be Doctor Who and now he hears you say that? I know. I oh. mean, listen, Russell, it James was an either Bond. or. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've got to go for Bond. No, I mean, Bond was like... Bond's in the future. Me and my... No, I'd love to play a Bond villain. I think that would be so much fun. Um, but me and my dad and my brother would watch Bond religiously and it feels more than just like one of these franchises. It's like, it's very much a part of my family. And also I'd love to see where Bond goes in the next few years and to open up well, what... Have like, they done young Bond? They haven't. Listen, Barbara Broccoli, if you're listening... No, but they, have they done the, a prequel? No. There's eyes, guys. Yes! You can't You can't see this on the podcast, but yes! uh, we're, there's, there's an eye connection. Okay. We I need like, to... Just let's me, start this rumour. Barbara! <laughs> okay, so you can be young Bond... I'm loving this, by the way. If only casting was this easy. Bash is Bond. If only we could, like, yeah. you know. Oh, I love just... casting. No, I love doing the casting This game. is great. If yeah. you can cast yeah. me as Bond, yeah. happiness. Uh, let's see who, but I think your mother. Yeah. Kate Winslet. I mean, what yeah. a compliment. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Kate Winslet um, as your mum. And then maybe, like, the the show is about, like... A, I know who your dad a, is A radio well. host assassin, and it's you. Oh, but you, can, I, oh yeah. can I be in it? Okay, Obviously. Good. No, but your dad... You cast me. Come I, on, no, you have Paul to be Bettany in it. Paul Bettany as okay. your dad. Okay, wow. Okay. Lucky right. me. People are like, how yeah, did yeah. that happen um, from those two uh, I, I'm, the, I'm the evil villain. Oh, yes. You want to be a villain? Yeah, no, I want to be a villain. Also, because no, it's like a modern take on the spinny chair, because you're in a radio chair. Yeah, yeah, okay. Little white cat is actually the microphone. No, I'm allergic to cats. The, but it's the, it's the you know, okay. the like boom, oh, white, you stroke okay. a microphone. But I don't that actually interview want people to with. kill anybody because I don't like that. Right. So I want to be a villain. So maybe you do like a Kingsman thing where you do like don't like blood, but other people kill people for you. No, I don't want anybody to get killed. No one dies. I know. Here's the The first I pacifist make, Bond no, film. No. no. Yes. But everyone has to be in a musical theatre show. Yes. There we it go. It should end with a musical number. Yes. 007 <laughs> strikes again. 
I, I think we've got, I think we should, we should call some people. That's it. Okay, that and Doctor Who. So Russell. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Doctor I'm Who. so excited to see what he does with it. It might be you. It, who knows? I mean, it won't be, but it might. Let's start that rumor. <laughs> Let's start that. Um, um just just bef- before we uh, wrap up, we got to talk about your music that you didn't want to talk about on the radio. So obviously, there is music. There, there. is. It's obviously you don't want to talk about it because well, you're no, now smiling not, and blushing. not like not don't want to talk about it. But um, I have no idea what I'm <laughs> what I'm doing with it. I just like writing music. Whenever I didn't have acting, I had writing music, and at school. I would frequently just skive lessons slash if I was having a shit time, just not show up and just spend my time like playing the piano and writing music. Um, and it was so therapeutic and so lovely. And whenever friends come over and they want to hear music, sitting down in an evening and playing people's songs brings me so much joy. Um, but I've just, I've got no idea where I'd take it, what I'd want to do with it. Like, it's hard enough to be a successful singer and a successful actor, let alone trying to do both at the same time. Um, but at some point, I'd love to do something with it because mainly just because the thought of not share, like putting it out in the world makes me sad, even if only one person listens to it, because all of like it's not kind of I want to be a pop star. It's like yeah. all of my music and every song I've written is um, reflective of a very important either very good or very bad point in my life and even like when I left school the last thing I did was I did like a concert thing um and and that felt like a real moment of confidence in playing my songs in front of people who didn't like me or haven't been nice to me and lots of these songs were about these people and I was like fuck you I'm out of here um so music will always have a sense of like empowerment to me um, so I'd love to do something with it, but I just don't know what. You'll know when it's time, though, as well. Yeah. So don't let anybody push you into that. Uh, you, like I said, you you're a star. It's it's so exciting to talk to you now. Um, and in another ten years, when I uh, come back and interview you again, hopefully I'll see you in between. Yeah, that, I mean, come on, another ten years. <laughs> do I have we to wait it, ten years until we see each other? And you've got you again. and Amelia, and you've both got a couple of Oscars, and you <laughs> and you're now you've done Young Bond. Imagine it's happened. We've done our film, the musical James Bond. <laughs> Blessing. Thank you so much thank for having you. me. Honestly, it's it's thank a dream. You. You're so lovely. And please thank your uh, lovely family as well. I will. Thank you so much. <laughs>